Well, I'm Matthew Kaplan. Um, I grew up in uh, northwest Indiana in the Whiting Robertsdale area. I live in Chicago now. Uh, and I'm a professional photographer, and I've been, uh, amongst other things I've been doing, I've been documenting uh, or at least, at least responding to the industrial environment that I grew up in and that I still enjoy visiting and that I, you know, still is part of my life. And specifically the industrial environment around uh, the Calumet area and the, uh, including the southeast side here in Chicago. So the exhibit here tonight is of that work then? Yeah, this is an exhibit of work. Uh, it spans uh, about 30 years. Uh, some of this work goes back to 1987 and the early 90s. Some of it's more recent. Um, I used to, um, still do to some extent, but I used to go uh, uh, sometimes get out really early for the sunsets and try to find a, you know, a place where there was a good vista. I was almost always shooting over the over the walls of the factory, so to speak. Uh, only once or twice did I get invited in. Uh, usually I was invited out. Um, I'm sure a lot of people who try to shoot industry have had the experience of the guards coming over to ask you what you're doing. Um, but I, over, you know, because I grew up around here and because I hear a lot, um, I knew certain areas where you could go and get your vistas without being on uh, private property. And uh, so I have a whole collection of areas where I would just go, try to be there for sunrise or sunset, and uh, you know hope I got something nice. And occasionally I did. I think I was looking at, at some of them, and I'm sure that, that you know there was post production work done on some of them to to create the effect. But what I was looking at was where the heck did you get a crane shot like that? You know, like which one? Um, I'm trying to remember. Yeah. It was one where you were. It looked like you were shooting like you were up, you know, like you were saying on the it, fence or something like that, as if you were in midair shooting down, I may have been down the river, I'm not sure anymore, I'd uh, have to look on the side again. And I thought, I know, I know there's an answer to this, but I'm impressed, you uh, know? Well, thank you. Yeah, no, I mean, there's one shot that I actually hear that, uh, because I did actually get into Amoco, uh, they hired me before it was BP, uh, and after it was Standard Oil, when it was Amoco, uh, I got, um, invited uh, to come in and actually shoot some stuff in the Whiting refinery back in the early 90s. So one of the pictures we have on the walls here was actually inside the Amico refinery. That might be the picture you're talking about because it is kind of high up. Yeah, it was uh, impressive. And uh, and it's, uh, I'm assuming it's okay to show it. It was taken for their annual report, but uh, I still, it's one of my favorite photos. Uh, but. Um, and I have occasionally, as I said, I've occasionally been invited in uh, to some other industrial facilities, but usually, uh, even now, I'm still just trying to get the same views uh, really anyone can get if they poke around a little bit. I really enjoy, one of my favorite places to photograph from are the bridges over the Calumet River, yeah. and specifically the 100th Street Bridge, I think, is a triumph uh, of, you know, a vista. I, in fact, I've had this idea that, that we should put up a vista point the way that you see sometimes out uh, west or in, you know, they'll say here's a scenic point stop yeah, yeah. here and take a look. I think either the 100th Street Bridge or the 95th Street Bridge, uh, they should put up a sign and say stop, you know, here, park and have a look because I just think those are magnificent vistas, you know, of the industrial heritage, the active industry and the industrial heritage of this area. You, you shot one corridor shot. And I think it was it was leaning toward blue too, which was I love blue, uh -huh. and it was right down the corridor from I think 95th Street at least the whole uh -huh. river looking southward. And I thought, wow, you know, all the bridges, yeah, and they were looking good. <laughs> they were oh, looking well, they, good. Yeah. yeah, sometimes they do. I mean, the trick is to um, you know to get there in good light, uh, get there early or get there late. And bridges are tricky too because the. Um, um, when the light gets nice, you have to go for longer exposures, and then the trucks go by and the bridge yeah. starts shaking. You know how that is as yeah. a photographer. So uh, it can be very frustrating. You can spend a lot of time and only get a few shots. You did, yes, you have a section on Rome and Barcelona as well. Oh, in my, uh, yes. Yeah. I travel a lot, uh, or I have traveled a lot for my business. So, uh, in Rome, especially, is a in fact, I think if I didn't live it here, I'd like to live in Rome, so uh, if I could afford it. Yeah. So how has this been for you? This, this has been great. It's been great to be on the walls here. There's amazing, uh, other amazing art here. I think Roman's stuff is phenomenal. 
I'm not sure if my stuff mixes all that well with it actually, but I enjoy seeing it on these walls. Uh, but it's been a great time and I've met uh, some really interesting artists you know, who work here as well, younger artists who I don't know if I would have uh, you know, crossed paths with if I hadn't been associated for a time with this gallery, so uh, that's been great. And the alderman, uh, Sue Garza, uh, was uh, instrumental in kind of hooking me up with Roman, uh, so and she's, she was real supportive of this as well, so she's really supportive of the arts down here, and I, I'm grateful to her for that, and um, I'm grateful to be on these walls. It's, What's next for you, Lynn? Uh, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is talk of a show in Hammond in about a year with um, Kathy Loss Rathburn, do you know her? She's a... What was her last name? Kathy Loss Rathburn. I she's have a piece that she did many years ago. Oh, yeah, okay, she's yeah. a watercolor artist. Is she White Ripple? Yeah, she is. And no, she's not there anymore, I don't think. Uh, I think she's gone from White Ripple. But she and I have shown... Some of this work was shown in a group, in a double show that she and I did uh, for the South Shore Arts uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, it was nice because some of these photos uh, were of the same scenes that she did watercolors of and there was a nice a real uh, great synergy between having the same scene showing it how a photographer might look at it and how a watercolor artist might look at it and she is uh, indomitable and she is uh, putting together she wants to put together a bigger show uh, of our work together not uh, industrial and then also scenic shots of the city and the, uh, the lakefront so that's, uh, she said that's going to be happening in uh, the spring of 2018. So yeah, I think it's going to be at the, uh, she said she's got the uh, Calumet, um, the, that Welcome Center. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. You know. That'll be great. Yeah, the Dillinger Museum, I think, has moved out and there's more room now than there <laughs> used to be. Is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you'd like to share with us? Uh, well, only that I think people need to remember. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if you remember, I'm not sure the industry is ever going to go away here, but this area is changing and there's a lot of fields that are now green that used to be brown and then 25 or 30 years ago were full of big buildings where people made a living and people lived their lives. And I think, I like to think my pictures might help preserve a little of that, but I actually think people need to work hard to preserve some of the physical remnants of the uh, of the industry here. Uh, it's a shame that there's very little that was left from the U.S. Steel South Works, but at least those ore walls are there. If people get a chance to go see the new park there, I think it's uh, an amazing uh, it space. And there's a beautiful sculpture by Roman there, mm -hmm. um, which is well worth the trip. Uh, and I think uh, this area, I think there needs to be more done to preserve the industrial heritage of this area. I think. Uh, Probably the Pullman site will uh, be a focus for that, but I think it needs to come here too, because there's only so much of Pullman, and there is a heck of a lot more here in, in Northwest Indiana. So that's Matthew Kaplan, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Jacob Kaplan, and uh, here at Underwood Bridge Gallery with my uh, dad's wonderful photographs. And uh, I'm, personally, I'm part of a group called Forgotten Chicago, so we cover overlook neighborhoods, history, and industrial history of Chicago, we give tours, things like that. So I love this sort of stuff. I kind of grew up with it. And uh, yeah, history is one of my things. Politics is the other. I'm also executive director of the Cook County Democratic Party. So very involved in the political scene in Chicago. But I love it where history and politics intersect. So I love, you know, history of neighborhoods like the East Side and, and yes. You know, not just the built environment and the buildings, but also the political history and social history, everything. I'm interested in all of it, anything relating to the Chicago region. So often it's the politics that leads to much of what follows, right? Often it is. <laughs> I think it's at the, at the base of everything, pretty much. So that's, uh, yeah. So in regard to Forgotten Chicago, so what have you found in this immediate area? What's that? What have you found in this immediate area? Oh, gosh, what have I not found? I mean, again, my, uh, you know, my dad grew up around here just across the border in Whiting, so I, my grandma still lives here, so I've spent a lot of time down here since I was a kid, so 
you know, just I love the the history of the bridges, the Calumet River, the steel mill remnants, the old Acme Steel along Torrance Avenue, the you know, stuff you can still go and see, even though all the steel mills are gone from, from this side of the border. Just I love those uh, physical remnants that still still are out there. Are you especially fond of your I am, I am, and I want to see them saved, and I want to see them interpreted. Uh, you know, I hope that the Steel Rivers Park is as the area develops. I hope that uh, there'll be some interpretive historical. <laughs> markers and you know, people can understand the important history there of U.S. Steel. Right. Okay, so the next 20 years you're going to? <laughs> I don't know. 20 years is a long time, but uh, <laughs> no, it's not. But uh, I, I personally, I enjoy my career in politics, so I don't know where that'll lead. I love history, so I'm, you know, I've written a couple books already on neighborhoods of Chicago. I want to continue doing that. I've got a lot of book ideas, so hopefully I'll have. Bunch more books out by then. They take a while, but uh, I, I want to keep doing that. I want to keep building up Forgotten Chicago. Keep doing our tours and so tell with... us about those books. Sure. So, Avondale and Chicago's Polish Village is an Arcadia book that came out a couple years ago about the neighborhood on the northwest side of uh, Chicago. I co-authored that, and we just are putting the finishing touches on Logan Square, the history of Logan Square. So that's uh, going to be coming out, but not just history of neighborhoods. I've got all sorts of ideas about books on the history of Chicago development and architecture and industrial history so I want to try to get some of that done in the next, uh, next 20 years for sure and, and I see that you have the enthusiasm for at least the next 20 years yes yeah, much longer than that <laughs> more than a lifetime <laughs> if I do say so myself yeah. okay thank you thanks thank you Jacob yeah. and actually I mean I do other kinds of photography too and they tend to be more uh, I don't only shoot in this I like shooting uh, well what's your next favorite uh, walking through streets and alleys and just finding uh, scenes that kind of look like that uh, and then my next favorite is probably Rome though I just I'm absolutely uh, have you ever been to Rome? Uh, yes 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 yeah so uh, I just think Rome is the most amazing place in the world frankly have you done any preliminaries like you put and I love the uh, the overlapping textures of the different ages that are represented there. I just think it's, that's what I like about Rome. And there's a little bit of that in, you know, some of these, and not so much these photographs, but the stuff that I photograph when I'm walking down the street. Maybe beyond that, I just would like to uh, get uh, more work, but don't we all need more work? So uh, we should be moving towards something like that. All right, Frank. <laughs> Mr. Corona. <laughs> Wow. Both my brothers were in World War II. Ah, and when they came back, uh, they worked at Standard Oil. Oh, there it is, Frank. That's Frank. Hey, yeah. Frank. Hey. Um, Come over here. Lieutenant from the fire yeah. department. Are you here? Yeah. Oh, this is you perfect. <laughs> yeah, okay. And there's pizzas. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good, good. Is he still hung over to you? I know. I, I was going to How are you? Good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> good. Okay.